Welcome everyone, this is Computer Vision Lecture 12 on Vision Transformers. Uh, note that Vision Transformers uh, replaces the lecture on style transfer, so I think uh, it's an interesting topic. It kind of fits better into the supervised block here, um, so I hope you don't mind. Okay, so the Vision Transformer was originally proposed by a team at Google Brain. Um, it appeared at iClear 2021 and has already collected over 2,000 citations, so that one uh, were, you know, made a big splash. Okay, so before we start uh, getting into the Vision Transformer, we need to recap what Transformers are. And uh, I have recorded uh, you know, an hour-long video or so that you should watch before you uh, continue here. So click on that link or that link or whatever that link will then appear. I have never done that on YouTube. Um, watch that and then come back and then we'll continue. Okay, so for those of you who know what transformers are, let's just uh, recap the basic like component um, of, uh, of transformer. So first of all, we have three matrices uh, one of uh, which is called Q for queries, one is called K for keys, and one is called V for values. Now, these are um, the original set of tokens embedded into a space that can be learned, right? So WQ, WK, and WV are matrices exactly uh, for projecting, um, you know, your tokens of dimensionality, whatever, D, into the internal transformer um, dimensionality. Now, the first multiplication, that one here, produces this attention map here. So, right, so for a key, which let's say um, is the first token, um, you multiply that by all those different tokens in that sequence, and they look differently because they are embedded with a different matrix, right? And by multiplying these together, we obtain that first line, which in the next multiplication defines how to mix these values for the first token. Okay, so you multiply that matrix here uh, by that matrix, uh, which just tells you how to mix these values to obtain a new set um, of tokens and then, you know, these are pushed through all the, you know, normalization and, and um, MLP layers as described in that first video. Now, vision transformers are basically NLP transformers, and they only differ in these two things, the way they break down the input image into patches, and then this classification token that was you know, introduced, I think, in the BERT paper. Um, so, first of all, the input is, uh, is um, you know, how do you even say that, like, uh, broken down into patches, in non-overlapping patches, by the way, of size P times P. Yeah? So each of these patches uh, here, is three channels because it's color times p times p yeah? and now these will <coughs> oh, excuse me these will then be flattened so that we have a vector that has dimensionality well three times uh, p squared um, and then these are pushed into a linear projection so there's just a matrix multiply to that to those vectors right and they will then uh, be embedded here in in these vectors and get added to um, so-called positional encodings so these are vectors that can also be learned and they have to represent kind of the position of these patches in the original image and you can use very simple ones uh, or more complex ones that kind of preserve uh, the spatial structure of the image, but in the end, um, if you learn them, um, they kind of capture the spatial properties of these patches and uh, work very well. Now, this token 
it has also positional encoding. It comes, uh, it's also uh, like, a, like a learnable kind of embedding of something that we call CLS or a classification token. This, um, you know, increases the size of the sequence to n plus one, and that is the sequence length that will be pushed through the encoder. And the encoder here is just um, like the normal attention is all you need um, transformer architecture. So the input is pushed through a normalization layer, then through this multi-headed attention uh, layer. Um, and this output has the same dimensionality as the input. So you can add the input in this kind of skip connection uh, way um, onto each other. And then this is pushed through a normalization layer, another feed forward network, and then uh, again, added uh, to the previous input. Um, the skip connections here uh, improve the learning performance. And I think we talked about that when we, when we uh, introduced ResNets to you. And then you repeat that uh, a couple of times. So in the Vision Transformer paper, they had um, different depth for different um, sizes uh, of Vision Transformers. And we'll get to this in a second. And then you take only that last token only that, um, um, you know, first, let's say not last, it's the first token, um, which, you know, through the process of, uh, you know, mixing all those values um, according to the attention map into the representation, um, this guy should contain everything, um, you know, information from all the patches. Um, and then you push this into a normal MLP, which then uh, does a softmax classification uh, over you know, those classes here. And so you know uh, what kind of stuff you have in the image. And that's the architecture, right? So there's just a simple uh, way to kind of integrate everything into, um, into a representation, into a vector, and a simple way of breaking down uh, your image in two patches, and then you just use the normal uh, NLP transformer. So in the paper, the authors uh, show uh, different versions of the uh, VAT. So uh, one that's uh, called uh, VAT base, which is the smallest version, uh, VAT large and huge, and they're still, uh, you know, not small. So compared to uh, BIT, which is uh, a ResNet architecture that they use for comparison, uh, also proposed by Google earlier, um, 600 uh, million parameters is uh, is small, but it's still, I mean, you know, for consumer grade uh, computers that we have, that's uh, something we can't even train. Um, so now, if we look at the numbers now. Um, it's like a mixed picture. So um, BIT and Noisy Student are ResNet and EfficientNet baselines um, that they use to compare uh, the vision transformers with. Um, they have three, um, like columns here, three versions. So the, the VAT huge um, that they trained uh, with 14 by 14 pixel patches, uh, the VAT large um, that they trained on uh, um, 16 by 16 pixel patches, um, and also two data sets that they used to train those VATs on. Uh, one is the uh, ImageNet that has uh, 21,000 uh, classes, um, not the 1,000 classes of the original uh, ImageNet data set. And they use JFT, which is a uh, Google proprietary um, data set that has 300 million images. Um, and now, if you train a VIT on ImageNet, even on the big one, you do not um, surpass um, or, or outperform uh, confidence. So you kind of you know reach their performance, but you don't uh, exceed them. You need a lot of more data um, to actually be able to surpass these results, and that's consistent, uh, you know, on ImageNet, on Cyfar and other data sets. Um, and that is very interesting because, um, you know, uh, transformers really are kind of 
uh, a very generalized computer, let's say, the way they kind of connect information together is like less um, specialized, right? So we call this, um, you know, inductive bias. So the, you know, some uh, structural properties of um, CNNs, right? So those local kernels, for example, they impose like a bias towards what they can learn but also what kind of structure they expect in the data. And transformers are less biased, let's say. So it kind of makes sense that we see uh, them performing well only if they have a lot of more data. But the cool thing now also is that if you look at the first projection, right? So from the um, three times P squared dimensional uh, vectors that are like the, the, the first image patches that we uh, extracted from the original image, uh, these are then projected to those internal uh, representations. And if you look at what kind of patterns these matrices extract, we see that th this really looks like something that we already have been seeing in confidence, right? So different, um, um, you know, st stripes and, and checkerboard uh, patterns or image gradients or color gradients and all these things, yeah? Um, secondly, the, those positional embeddings um, also make sense, right? So if we take the positional embedding for, um, let's say, the upper, the, the, so the top left position, the top left patch, and then take the dot product with all the other different positions, we see that, or the dot product with all the positional embeddings of all the different positions, we see that it uh, maximally correlates with, well, the top left position, right? And so it, that's kind of consistent over all the different positions. So that means that, um, you know, the, the patch embedding kind of represents a position and also has higher um, similarity, right, to uh, patches in the same row and column. And that's what, are, what they are supposed to be doing. Okay, so to summarize, the transformer encoder spits out a sequence of n plus one tokens, and only the last token, the Z0 token, is then fed into an MLP that then creates a vector, um, you know, Y hat, that represents the distribution, the softmax distribution over all output classes. Now, what is C, uh, Z0? Well, um, there's an, a, a lot more components uh, like uh, rows in the Q matrix, but let's just look at that one that actually is relevant for C, uh, uh, Z0. So that's the first token. That's also that, you know, that's corresponding to the classification token. That's multiplied by all the uh, tokens in K, and that creates this attention mask, which in the next multiplication, defines how much, um, you know, each of these value tokens contributes to Z, right? And remember, those, those value tokens are basically the entire image, or each of these tokens represents uh, a patch, um, and through the sequence of encoder layers, kind of integrates, um, you know, information um, from basically everywhere. So does Z0, which, you know, is something that we kind of expect to require for this classification, yeah, for, uh, for you know, then producing this kind of output distribution where we see, okay, that's a cat or a dog. Okie doke. Mm. Now, if we look at this attention mask, uh, we see, um, you know, entries that are high, these correspond to, um, you know, regions in the image that in this mixing procedure here, right? So uh, that vector times that matrix is kind of a mixing procedure. Um, so those regions were relevant in the mixing procedure. And these kind of make sense. So that, that's also a cool way to kind of explain um, the, the classification output. Okay, so this was Vision Transformer. Now, after that paper came out, um, many papers followed up, 
and for example showed how to combine convolutions uh, with the original uh, vision transformer architecture. Now, um, there are many papers that show that if you do that, that combination of convolution and, and transformer architectures, uh, you can actually get better and faster and smaller. And that's a paper that we want you to implement because, I mean, obviously you can't train uh, the original vision transformer and, uh, you know, expect to see the same results. But please read this paper. Um, it's um like you see here combining convolutions on the image level to obtain representations that are then reshaped and um pushed through transformers there's a little difference in the way they process those um, transformer representations but um, in the end the architecture is pretty similar to what you just saw the cool thing is that by doing this small architectural change, um, the authors say we can train um, this kind of model, um, you know, to reach state-of-the-art performance on SciFar in only 30 minutes, even if you don't own a GPU and just do this on CPU. So uh, please go here, read this paper, um, and implement this um, on your next assignment. And the last thing I want to leave you with is a little bit um, of a reading list because I think this is a this is a this is a very interesting field right now. So uh, we talked about the VIT, the Vision Transformer, and how it outperforms CNNs only if you have a huge data set, and then you can just like get rid of CNN uh, of uh, sorry of convolutions um, after all. But uh, people have then you know, and that's just one paper, right? Uh, looked at, okay, how can we combine this? And by the way, transformers and, um, uh, you know, attention layers have been uh, uh, used by people even before the, this paper here. But um, yeah, so you, we still see that there's like uh, room for improvement if we uh, combine stuff. Um, also an interesting paper is this, uh, vision transformers kind of represent uh, Im images um, a little differently than confidence do. Um, they kind of um, use more shape information, uh, just like humans do. Um, and also, there are like two more papers that uh, I wanted to keep your or to to um, steer your focus towards. Uh, that's a paper by Facebook, um, and they say, "Hey, look at this. This is a pure confidence, and uh, it performs way better." Um, that's that's um, that's a nice paper that I recommend reading. And also, there's a paper that's called MLP Mixer that doesn't use conf uh, layers, that doesn't use transformer uh, transformers, just MLPs, but in a kind of weird uh, and and re refreshing um, kind of fashion. So please read this. Um, we may even discuss that later in the lecture. I'm not so sure about that. All right, so. This was the lecture on vision transformers. Uh, that one was pretty pretty short because I kind of expect that you didn't know transformers yet. So please go back, watch the other uh, lecture that I linked um, also down in the description of the video. See you all on Wednesday. Bye.